Ladies and gentlemen, let's Red Gaming to the come video. Let us discuss the Substance Engine, which is a next generation engine for texturing on the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and the PC, as well as a host of other devices as well. And we'll go into that in just a moment. So the Substance Engine actually integrates with a variety of different really large game engines, including the Unreal Engine, Unity, 3D Studio Max, uh, Maya, and so on and so on and so forth. And its basic premise is this, that it adds unique special effects um, by real-time dynamic effects uh, and dynamic texturing in real-time. So you can have a lot of cool special effects being uh, implemented like that. Plus, it actually is a very small file, but is dynamic textures compression. So because of all of that, you can drastically reduce the size of your titles because you don't have to worry so much about, well, fully uncompressed textures. Now I'll go into that more in just a moment. Instead, I want to focus on the primary reason for the video. So on their website, and I've put a link in the description, is not that much on this yet. So um, hopefully they'll release a few more details over the next few days, but on Algorithmic's website, they've got a basically a chart of performance on um, the texture, and I quote, texture generation speed in MB slash S DXT compressed one CPU. So I'm going to uh, explain what that means. It's basically the speed, the texture is being generated in megabytes per second, which is a compressed texture on one CPU. I'm assuming that means one CPU core, right? So I'm going to discard the first three results, which are basically mobile devices, which, you know, who cares in terms of, you know, performance, at least for now. And instead, we're going to focus on the X1, the PS4, and the i7. So I'm going to go into the i7 in a moment, but let's begin with 12, which is the number that the Xbox One is managing. The PS4 manages 14, so in other words, it's edging out the Xbox One's performance. Meanwhile, coming in with a sledgehammer is the Core i7. The i7 manages a score of 26. So in effect, it's pretty much like one CPU core of the i7 is the PS4 and the Xbox One's score combined. That gives you an idea of just how powerful a PC CPU is right now. I'd also like to add the i7 they have for the desktop has not been named. And there are a lot of i7s. For example, there is the 2600K and the 2700K, which are part of the Sandy Bridge line. There are the Ivy Bridge line. And there's also... Uh, the Haswell line, which would be the 4770K, and they've also not mentioned the clock speeds of it and various other bits and bobs. I'm going to assume that they're using the Ivy Bridge, um, not the Haswell, simply because it's kind of the median. So anyway, um, let's discuss the main point for a moment, the Xbox One versus the PS4. What is going on here? Why is it that the Xbox One actually has a lower score than the PS4? Before anyone yells, well, it's, you know, the GPU, dude. It's, you know, 1.84 versus 1.32, actually slightly less than that, 1.24, if you count the fact that 10% is reserved for the OS. Ah, but they are stating CPU. So one would assume this means CPU performance generation. So if that is the case, there is no GPU compute involved whatsoever. In other words, in this purpose, it's not really doing that much. I'm assuming it basically means that the CPU is generating the texture and is basically storing it locally. They've not really elaborated super amounts on this, so I'm going to try and confirm this over the next couple of days. But here's the main meat of what I'm going to say. What's interesting to me is that, first of all, the numbers are fairly close. It's not like, say, the i7 versus the PS4. But let's assume this is the CPU only that is being involved, which is reasonable to assume since that's what they're stating. And... If that is the case, and the GPU is not involved at all in this computation, there are likely several reasons behind it. The first is that the Xbox One's 
oper operating system slash development systems are not as advanced as the PS4s yet. In other words, they are still working on stuff. Second reason is it's possibly to do with memory. Now, I'm not discussing the ES RAM here. Instead, I'm focusing on the DDR3. It has considerably this bandwidth to deal with. However, remember that the AMD Jaguar, at least for memory on the PlayStation 4, has about 20 gigabytes-ish per second of access. They haven't 100% confirmed that, so it could be slightly higher. So I'm going to say 20 to 25-ish gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth to the main system RAM. I'd also like to hasten to add that if you consider that the i7 is also utilizing DDR3, the difference, of course, with a desktop is that, well, that memory bandwidth for DDR3 is not being utilized with graphics. And there are certainly a slew of other uh, reasons behind this. Uh, remember, there were some rumors that the PS4's CPU was actually running faster than the Xbox One's CPU. Remember, the Xbox One CPU is actually running at 1.75. That's been confirmed by Microsoft. And it's widely accepted and believed that the PS4's is running at 1.6. There were some rumors that were floating about that were stating it was 1.8. But here's why I don't think that that's really the case. Because, one po you know, 50... Let's like call it 50 megahertz, right? It's not going to be the difference between 12 and 14 points. So... I don't really think it's anything to do with that. So it's obviously something else. I would really like some confirmation right now. As far as I'm aware, this news has only just gone up. So I guess we're just going to have to see what happens over the next few days. Hopefully there'll be some more information regarding this. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video anyway. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.